fear is a tool. But when that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. before you've nothing left. I don't care what happens to me. It's only gonna get worse for you. Whoa, take it easy, sweetheart. Hear everything they say, ain't you? Maybe we're not so different. Who are you under there? Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my Batman trailer video. Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson dropped a brand new trailer with a whole bunch of new footage and Easter eggs, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get everything. There's a bunch of other trailers that they also released, too, that I'll be doing videos for, like the Flash movie with the other versions of Batman, Ben Affleck's Batman, as well as Michael Keaton's Batman. But we'll just go through the trailer shot by shot, starting at the beginning here. So we start on a shot of the Riddler with Gordon in the Gotham City PD coming to arrest him. So it's probably a little bit later in the film after they discover his crime scene and start to pick up on his clues that Edward Nigma is the person leaving all these clues. And I do love the question mark Easter egg in his coffee cup. And I think I figured out what's going on with the Riddler's clues here that he's leaving in this giant crime scene that's featured very prominently in the trailer. When it says the sins of my father, I think that's a reference to Bruce Wayne's father, like the sins of the old money of Gotham, not doing anything to help Gotham the way that they should. Mitchell is the name of Don Mitchell, the former mayor of Gotham City that is killed by the Riddler in the trailer. It's implied that he was corrupt, like he says, no more lies. Then under no more lies, there's the name Coulson, and that's a reference to Gil Coulson, who's one of the Gotham City prosecutors. The way that Peter Sarsgaard explained his character is that he said he's not a very nice person, so when he says no more lies, it's implied that maybe Gil Coulson is putting people behind bars that don't belong behind bars, like he's prosecuting the wrong criminals. Whereas the Riddler is trying to get Batman to serve true justice and get rid of all the corruption inside Gotham. Renewal is a lie might be part of some bill that they're trying to pass in Gotham City. Like you would revitalize a downtown area, do some project to try and fix things up. But because of what the Riddler is doing, it sounds like this is all being controlled by the mob element like Carmine Falcone in the mob, as well as corrupt people inside the government of Gotham City. Then the reference to Savage is probably just the Riddler calling Batman out for how nuts he's going on criminals all over the city the past year. The way they said when the movie picks up, the people of Gotham City don't really know whether Batman is a friend or foe just because they hear about this guy that's dressing up like a bat going around beating the crap out of criminals everywhere. So there's this real cloud of suspicion and he's incredibly violent. So people think of Batman as being just like the other criminals as well, kind of. And even though it's not a direct Batman origin story, it's Batman Year Two, there is a lot of origin stories going on for some of the other classic Batman villains, like something of a Riddler origin story and a Catwoman origin story. You also probably notice the soundtrack that's playing on this trailer too. So it's a slightly different version of that Nirvana cover, Something in the Way. They played it on the last big trailer too. And also some of the new Batman theme music at the end of the trailer. 
Then we get the narration from Robert Pattinson's Batman talking about the bat signal itself, about how the bat signal isn't just something to alert him, to communicate with him. It's also used to inspire fear in the criminals, like the way he uses fear as a tool. We get a much longer version of this scene of him beating up this gang, all dressed with the skull makeup. The funny thing too is that you may have noticed is that one of the actors here in the background actually plays Tim Drake Robin on the Titans TV series, also on HBO Max. Then we get our first scene with Batman going to confront the Riddler in prison about everything that he's been doing, the clues that he's been leaving to him. The same way that Alfred's dialogue in the last trailer made it sound like the Riddler had been sending messages to Batman for a long time in these different crime scenes around Gotham. And obviously you watch this scene of them confronting each other and it feels very much like the Dark Knight where Batman was confronting the Joker trying to get information out of him. I made the David Fincher Zodiac comparison when talking about this version of the Riddler in my last big Batman video. Just the way that he's using ciphers and clues just seems very similar to the way that the Zodiac Killer left messages. Also the Zodiac Killer in real life wore a mask that looks kind of like the mask that the Riddler is wearing during this as well. So even visually it seems like he's inspired by the actual Zodiac Killer. This scene outside on the steps with all the different characters, all the major characters, seems like it's part of the mayor's funeral. Like you have Bruce Wayne along with Selena Kyle, Carmine Falcone, you also have the Penguin, everyone from the government, the police department, as well as the criminal underworld of Gotham, the mobsters all meeting there. We get way more footage of Batman and Catwoman together. I love the way that they're lighting this too. They actually said that they use some of the same stagecraft as the Mandalorian with those giant LED walls to do some of these big city shots but the footage gives you a much better sense for the vibe of her character during this film. It seems like they have great chemistry, but just like many versions of Catwoman that you've seen in the past, even though it's clear she's very intrigued by him, she still kind of wants to be her own person, do her own thing. Pretty much what you'd expect from Catwoman. She's not really meant to be a good character or a bad character. She'll often team up with Batman just as often as she'll team up with the villains. We get way more footage of Colin Farrell's Penguin. Now, even though it seems like he's a big part of this movie, Colin Farrell said that he wasn't in a ton of the movie, but there are some really cool fight scenes with him. I'm assuming he'll be much bigger in the sequel. We finally get some scenes with Andy Serkis's version of Alfred. We heard him in the last trailer, but we didn't actually see him on screen. In the conversation he's having with Batman feels very familiar. Almost every version of Alfred has had this conversation with Batman at some point early in his career. The way that Robert Pattinson explained Batman right now during the events of this movie is that he's still so fresh as Batman during year two, he doesn't completely delineate between where Bruce Wayne ends and Batman begins. Like there are no limits. Like he doesn't really think of himself as having two different personas. So he's kind of always in Batman mode but he hasn't developed the playboy Bruce Wayne persona that you see from other versions of Batman like when Christian Bale's Batman came back to Gotham to put on the cape and cowl he'd already fully developed that playboy persona we get a couple more big fight scenes I love the fight choreography here and obviously they're trying to make this feel very different from the fight choreography in the Dark Knight trilogy or even during the Zack Snyder DC films the other really cool thing you probably noticed in this trailer is the way they color code different scenes. There's the orange colors as you see the sun going down, there's the blue of night, then there's all the red colors in other scenes, particularly the fight scenes. Catwoman asks him who he is under that cowl. Obviously, she probably does not find out in this movie. Be a little bit early for that to happen. The clever way they play that in a lot of versions of the character, particularly in the comics, is that she just winds up figuring it out on her own because she is a really smart person and they spend enough time together that she does figure it out before he decides to reveal it himself. I also love the sound design, the way they play some of these scenes later in the trailer, especially the way they light up the scene here with the gunfire. Tell me this does not feel like the Darth Vader hallway scene from Rogue One. Like give me Darth Vader wrecking all the rebels, but make it Batman. And the really awesome chase scene with the penguin and the new version of the Batmobile, where he totally thinks he's got him, then he just comes barreling through that fire. You have to imagine that he probably destroys the Batmobile every single night that he goes out in it. And he just doesn't care because he has so much money that it doesn't matter. Like he could destroy a car every single night and replace it. And it would only take a fraction of his money to fix that. Couple great scenes of him gliding through the city. And then when the Riddler says, what's black and blue and dead all over, Matt Reeves actually tweeted this out. What I think the Riddler is taunting Batman with, what's black and blue and dead all over, is that he's talking about Batman himself. He could also be talking about justice. But the reason why I think he's talking about Batman himself, but Bruce Wayne, is because he's black and blue. Like he has bruises all over himself. His costume is black. So he's physically black and blue. But inside, Batman Bruce Wayne is kind of dead. Like he died the night that his parents died. And he's kind of been this ghost of a person just existing until he decides to become Batman and then develops that new persona as the Batman in Bruce Wayne. But like I said, per Robert Pattinson's comments, he hasn't completely figured that out in this movie. He doesn't know where Bruce Wayne begins and Batman ends. 
That's why you have him talking to characters like Alfred saying, I don't care what happens to me, and characters like Selena Kyle trying to counsel him, if you keep this up, you're going to die. And he just doesn't care what happens to him because as the Riddler taunts him, he's dead inside. But if you guys have a different take on that riddle, let me know in the comments. If you think it means something different, what's black and blue in Dead All Over? I also love the small detail you notice here too on the news broadcast that the Riddler live streamed one of his killings. It may have been him killing the mayor, which seems like a very modern thing to do. If it wasn't clear, this is taking place in present day on Earth too. That's why they're putting it in a different universe so they can explain why it takes place in present day when you have Ben Affleck's Batman who's in his 40s in present day on the main Justice League Earth. You also see Batman putting on the cape and cowl, and Matt Reeves had this really cool Easter egg. He said during Robert Pattinson's first costume test, they used the Val Kilmer costume for him to audition in. Robert Pattinson was putting on the eyeshadow camouflage makeup that Batman wears under his cowl, and Matt Reeves thought the scene of him putting on the eyeshadow was so cool that he just incorporated something like that scene into the movie. So during the movie, when he's putting on the cape and cowl, we'll see a much more extended version of that, like him putting the eye makeup on. Usually in a lot of Batman movies, you get a suit-up montage where it happens really quickly. Then the way they end the trailer here with this upside down shot of the penguin looking upside down and you're taking his perspective, watching Batman walk away from the fire, this just looks so badass. But what I'll do tomorrow is I'll do a longer Batman trailer video with that other featurette footage. There was a whole bunch of other behind the scenes footage and a bunch of clues about what's going on with a bunch more Easter eggs. So look out for that tomorrow. Also my Flash trailer video as well. There were a couple other big trailers. I'll try to do videos for everything in the next couple of days. So make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss anything. Everyone click here for my Black Adam trailer video and click here for that other new Batman footage. I'll update the link as soon as I post that video tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.